in this week's episode hear what you want to hear what you could be missing out on in terms of making your imaginal scene more real how you can become more skilled incorporate your imaginal senses into your imaginal scene you need to fuse in the five senses not from a physical perspective so use your senses to shape the life that you wish to manifest Welcome to this week's video with me, Fazila Bijo, where we're going to be looking at how you can utilize imagination far more effectively when you incorporate your imaginal senses. That's right. Your physical senses of touch, sight, smell, hearing are important, but how you incorporate them into your imagination when you go into your imaginal scene is very, very important in terms of making it real and bringing on the tones of reality in terms of your manifestation. Join me in this week's video. This is about how you can live from the end of your wish fulfilled, which means that you think from your desire. You become the person who already has their desire. And one of the ways that you do this is by using your imaginal senses and you fuse this into imagination. And this is what this week's episode is about. Neville calls this visionary fancy. It is chapter six of The Law and the Promise. We'll be looking at how the student of Neville's FB brings spiritual sensation into their imaginal scene. This week's episode is hear what you want to hear. Vision. This is about how you incorporate your five senses into your imagination. Neville explains the images of our imagination are the realities of which any physical manifestation is only the shadow. What he is saying here is that the images that we see in our imaginal state become the projection. And what we see in the physical reality, what is manifested in our physical reality is literally a shadow that is cast from our imagination. Now that is something that's very potent and strong in terms of your subconscious mind. When your subconscious mind actually accepts your desire as 100% true, it consents and it accepts that desire as being true. That particular aspect, that idea, that, that consciousness now becomes the reality. And that reality is projected into the physical world. What Neville signifies here is that your mind is where the reality is really created. It is the physical world that is a shadow that is cast in terms of your consciousness. And therefore, if we are to be faithful to the vision that we hold in our consciousness and that image that we hold as being true is what will be created in the physical world, that physical manifestation of itself becomes something that it has a right to make. Whatever your vision is, whether it is a positive vision or it's negative. Remember, there is no filter to your subconscious mind. That is what's going to be created. So the shadow that is cast into the world is totally, totally dependent upon you. What Neville says is we speak of the reality of a thing in the physical world, in the material substance, whereas what is really the reality is what is created and what is held in consciousness. So your Con your conscious mind has the idea which impregnates the subconscious mind and the subconscious mind takes that idea and it accepts it as being true. Now, the mechanism for how this becomes true is going to be dependent on how well you can hold to your vision. What makes the difference is how faithful you remain to your vision. Having faith is not at the religious level or having faith of the spiritual level, faith is about making the unseen seen, which means for a while, you are the only one that will be believing and will be seeing that that particular desire that hasn't manifested yet in your physical world is what you believe to be true. When we remain true to our vision, when we remain loyal to our vision, that is faith. We have seen it and we've accepted it as being part of our reality. Something very important in terms of how you create and how you manifest. Imagining is spiritual sensation. 
your imaginal sight, sound, scent, smell, taste and touch plays a big part in terms of how you enter into the feeling of the wish fulfilled. That is through spiritual sensation, which is the use of the senses, your imaginal senses, you will give that image the vividness, the sensory vividness that Neville talks about, that's going to become necessary to produce that image in your physical world. That sensory vividness, when it's infused into your imagination, because you now become the person who already has that, you live out, you feel that it is 100% truth. In your imagination, you have consented, which means you've accepted it to be true. Neville actually emphasizes the power of imagination and visualization in the manifestation process that he has prescribed. And he says, let's create a vivid scene that captures this concept. So if you will, before you close your eyes, look into the scene as I describe it. Imagine that you are standing in a lush, sun-drenched garden. The air is thick with the scent of blooming flowers. You feel the grass beneath your feet. It feels cool. It feels soft. Now, as you look around, you notice vibrant colors. You may see the blue sky. You may see a golden sky, the emerald leaves, the sunlight filtering through. Your first sense of sight. You now go into the imaginal space. You now close your eyes and you use your first sense of sight and you visualize the scene. You see vivid colors. You see details of the flowers around you. You see the play of light and shadow of the sunlight streaming. And now you bring the next sense in. You listen to the gentle rustle of the leaves in the breeze. You hear the distant chirping of the birds. You hear the soft hum of insects. And still keeping your eyes closed in your imaginal scene. You breathe in deeply. You smell the sweet fragrance of flowers. You let all of this fill your senses. As you smell these flowers, we bring in the next sense, which is touch. You reach out and you touch a flower. You feel the delicate petals against your fingertips. You can feel the warmth of the sun on your skin. There may be a cool breeze dancing around you. And you may even imagine plucking a ripe fruit from a nearby tree. Now, as you take a bite, you savor its sweetness, bursting with flavor. Now, as you immerse yourself in this sensory experience, your, the smells around you, the textures, the breeze, the warmth, you bring in and you feel the joy, the gratitude, and the fulfillment that comes from feeling and being fully present in this moment. <sighs> this is the essence of manifestation. You are simply creating a vivid inner reality that aligns with your desires. Remember, your outer world reflects your inner world. So use your senses to shape the life that you wish to manifest. Now you can drop into the simple, simple way of connecting your senses into a simple imaginal scene. You saw how quickly you could build up the scene with what you're seeing, what you're hearing, what you may smell. 
what you touch, and even what you taste. So if we bring it to a practical example for you, uh, on my previous videos, we talked about money, imagining money going from broke to cash. What you need to, what you do there is you immerse all of your senses. You bring your senses into the imaginal scene. You may see the money, you may see notes in an envelope, but you also know what money smells like. And if you need to remind your senses, take out a couple of notes and play with them and, until you get a lock in on the sensory elements, what you're seeing, what you are touching, what you are hearing. You can fan through the notes. Whatever is going to make it more real for you is what you bring in. I'm not going to advocate tasting money, but if that works for you, please let me know down in the comments about that. So come back to this particular segment in terms of practicing with your senses. It helps to choose something that you are not actually focused on in terms of being able to build capacity in order to bring your senses into your imaginary scene. Everything starts out as practice before we build a skill, before that skill can become consistent and we master it. And this is where it starts. Have you experienced the opposite of what you desired? Where you received disappointing news, that you truly wanted to manifest something, but you got the opposite. Well, Neville says you haven't fully, fully accepted it as part of your consciousness. You haven't felt it real. And you may have had some stuff within you that is in resistance. And also your inner speech may not be in alignment with your desires. In my other videos, the past two, we talked about how you must actually become in alignment with your desires in terms of your inner dialogue, not having any resistance, fully accepting and embracing that that desire is truly yours. I took some creative license and I created what in my mind would make a wonderful album cover for the particular manifestation we'll be talking about this week. It starts with FB talking about this and he says, a friend who knows my passionate fondness for opera tried to get Kirsten Flagstad's complete recording of Tristan and Isolde for me at Christmas. A little bit of the background in this because I like to have the full picture when I'm uh, reading anything and it helps our brain to make the, the connection. And Tristan and Isolde is about lovers in a medieval romance based in Celtic legend. The hero Tristan goes to Ireland to ask the hand of the princess Isolde for his uncle, King Mark of Cornwall. And there's, it's quite interesting in terms of this opera. On their return, the two mistakenly drink a love potion prepared for the king, and they fall deeply in love. It does end in tragedy. Uh, it's quite an interesting opera. So if you feel like you'd like to actually understand a bit more, I suggest that you could read up a little bit more about it. But on to the, onto our, our case study for this week, what FB says in a dozen record stores, he was told the same thing. RCA Victor is not reissuing this recording and there have been no copies available since June. FB says to Neville, on December 27th, I determined to prove your principle again by getting the album I desired so intensely. You will see how he infuses imagination with spiritual sensation, which I've touched on. He says, lying down in my living room, I mentally walked into a record shop I patronized and I asked the one salesman whose face and voice I could recall. The two spiritual sensations he brings in to his imaginal act is he knows the salesman's face and he recalls his voice. He asks the salesman, do you have Flagstar's complete Isolde? The salesperson replies, yes, I have. And that ended the scene and I repeated it until it was real to me. So FB brings in spiritual sensation of the place. So he uses sight in his imaginal scene and he brings in the sensation of hearing. He hears the salesperson say, yes, I have the record. Remember, you must infuse your imagination with 
a particular spiritual sensation. You can use one of your senses. It's good to try and bring in one or two that will confirm and correlate to each other. He went into the quiet space, he's gone into a relaxed state, and he mentally walked into the record store that he patronizes and he speaks to the salesperson. He further says, late that afternoon, I went to the record shop to physically enact the scene. So now he feels compelled. He wants to go into the store and he's now enacting the scene that he had previously brought into imaginal, uh, in, into his imagination and he, and he infused the spiritual sensation into it. Now he says that not one detail supplied by his physical senses would encourage him to believe that he could return or he could walk out of the store with those records because he had been told since that last September by the same salesperson in that very same shop, the same story his friend had received from them before Christmas. So what he then does is he approaches the salesman he had seen in his imagination that morning and he asks, do you have Flagstart's complete Isolde? The salesman replies, no, we haven't. This is what he does next. Without saying anything audible, he says inwardly, that's not what I heard you say. Now that's revision, by the way. When you hear something that is not in alignment with what you wish to achieve, you change it. You hear what you want to hear. And that is how you remain true to your vision. You do not take it at the um, value of what you're seeing in your physical reality. He says, as I turned to leave the shop, I noticed on the top shelf what I thought to be an advertisement of this set of records. And, and I remarked to the salesman, if you don't have the merchandise, you shouldn't advertise it. The salesperson says, that's right reaches up to take it down, he discovers it to be a complete album with all five records. Now, FB makes a comment here. He says, the scene wasn't laid exactly as I had constructed it, but the result confirmed what my imagined scene implied. How can I thank you? What FB does is he infuses the imaginal scene, what his senses felt in the shop, in his imagination, and he enriched it with aspects of how he could make it his. And that's how he then uses his imagination for a conscious purpose. So again, please be reminded that your imagining is spiritual sensation. And spiritual sensation means that you use your imaginal sight, your imaginal sound, your hearing, your sense of touch, your sense of taste. You bring all of that in together. And this is something that's very important that Neville speaks about. And he says this throughout a lot of his books. An assumption, though false, if persisted in, will harden into fact. But in this case study, FB says he had heard, and so had his friend heard, that the record wasn't available. His assumption that the record is available is, in a sense, false. And he persisted in that. And what Neville says, that even though your assumption what you see in your imaginal scene, what you see in your imaginal senses, says it's false to the physical world right now. When you persist in it, you cry, you project into, you project from your imaginal senses into your physical reality, the shadow that is cast from your consciousness will soon harden into fact when you persist. My previous video talks about the vision happens at the appointed hour. That appointed hour is determined by you. It will be determined by how strongly you can take on the vision as being real. How strongly what Neville talks about is the tones of reality. We talk about becoming the person who has their desire. Feeling is you consenting and accepting that your wish is real, that it is real to you in your imaginal state. It is real to you in your subconscious. And that subconscious mind, when it takes on the tones of reality, when that seed that is planted is nurtured through your faith that you already have it, that is how it comes into manifestation.
Neville says this, the imaginist dreams while awake. He is not the servant of his vision, but the master of the direction of his attention. And that's what you are constantly doing. You are becoming the master of how you direct your attention. Please leave your comments in terms of what did you find useful from this week's video. Thank you for joining me in this week's video. I would love to hear about your experience in terms of applying spiritual sensation in your imaginal scenes. Join me in next week's video where we'll talk more around how you can build this capacity on an ongoing basis. I'll catch you in the next video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Bye for now.